Tonight, the showdown. Social media companies facing blistering questions. Mark Zuckerberg standing and apologizing to parents who lost their children. Also tonight here, the horror. A son attacking and beheading his own father, a longtime federal worker. Authorities pointing to the suspect's rage over the government. First tonight, the top social media companies, including Meta, which runs Facebook and Instagram. Also the heads of X, TikTok and Snapchat facing parents holding up photos of their children, some who took their own lives after bullying and exploitation on social media. And the stunning moment, Mark Zuckerberg is asked to stand up and apologize, and he does. So Lena Wang on Capitol Hill. Also developing tonight for the first time, the White House now identifying the Iran-backed militants behind the deadly drone attack that killed three Americans. And tonight here, the heartbreaking moment the phone call from President Biden to one of the families, what the president reveals to them that moves the parents to tears. Arthur Raditz from Jordan. Here in the U.S., we're tracking two major storms, several states on alert at this hour for flooding, snow, and potentially damaging winds. Rob Marciano times it out. The horrific crime outside Philadelphia. The son accused of attacking and killing his own father, that longtime federal worker, posting graphic video, which we will not show here. Authorities tonight pointing to the son's rage at the federal government. The frightening scene in Tampa, a road rage incident, and the victim, a four-year-old girl, shot and wounded. The crisis at the border, and tonight you will hear the message from a leading Senate Republican who was asked today, should House Republicans tune out those demands from former President Trump not to support some of the very immigration solutions that Republicans have been demanding for years? Rachel Scott tonight. In New York City, authorities say two NYPD officers attacked by asylum seekers, multiple arrests. They are searching at this hour for more suspects. Tonight, the consumer alert and look at the images side by side. The FDA warning about eye drops and the potentially contaminated counterfeit drops. And the spectacular new images coming in from NASA. 19 spiral galaxies beyond the Milky Way. And you'll see the images right here tonight. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and we begin tonight with the very heated showdown on Capitol Hill. The top executives from social media companies facing blistering questions from senators and sitting right there were parents holding images of their children, many of whom have died by suicide after being bullied and exploited on social media. The CEOs of Discord, Snap, TikTok, X, and Meta, which of course runs Facebook and Instagram, all taking the oath. Behind them, the heartbroken, determined parents with the photos of their children. And the unexpected moment, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg if asked if he would stand up to apologize to the parents. He did, at what he said. ABC Selena Wang leading us off from Capitol Hill. In a blistering and combative hearing on Capitol Hill today, senators demanding social media executives do more to protect children online. You have blood on your hands. You have a product. You have a product that's killing people. Sitting behind the tech CEOs are parents holding photos of their children who they say took their own lives because of abuse on social media. And in this remarkable moment, Senator Josh Hawley confronts Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg. They're here, you're on national television. Would you like now to apologize to the victims who have been harmed by your product? Show them the pictures. Would you like to apologize for what you've done to these good people? Zuckerberg rising, turning around to face them. I'm sorry for everything that you involved in. It's terrible knowing that you have to go through the things that your families have, have suffered. And this is why we invested so much and are going to continue doing industry big efforts to, uh, to make sure that no one has to go through the types of things that your families have had to suffer. Zuckerberg and TikTok's chief executive agreed to testify, but senators had to subpoena X, Snapchat, and Discord CEOs to show up. Lawmakers slamming the companies for blocking regulation that may have prevented the tragedies. We've been working on this stuff for a decade. You have an army of lawyers and lobbyists that have fought us on this every step of the way. Senator Amy Klobuchar visibly upset admitting the failures of Congress. I'm so tired of this. It's been 28 years, what, since the internet? We haven't passed any of these bills. Zuckerberg, whose company Meta owns Facebook and Instagram, taking the most heat from senators, claiming there's no direct link between social media and mental health. I take this very seriously. Mental health is a complex issue, and the existing body of scientific work has not shown a causal link between using social media 
and young people having worse mental health outcomes. Senators pressing if his platform is safe for children. Is your platform safe for kids? I believe it is. Isn't the internet a dangerous place for children? I think it can be. Yeah, there's both great things that people can do and there are harms that we need to work. Yeah, to it's a dangerous place for children. But Brandon Guffey, who is in the hearing room, says the companies aren't doing enough. He blames Instagram for his son Gavin's suicide after he was sexually exploited by scammers, telling me he's not buying Zuckerberg's apology. He is a damn liar, is what he is. Where I'm from, we have a saying, don't talk about it, be about it. And your actions speak louder than words. So there's nothing that you can say until you start implementing these changes. So let's bring in Selena Wang live on the Hill tonight. Selena, first of all, did these top executives at the social media companies agree to any uh, concrete changes uh, moving forward in Congress? They've talked about this for years. Are, are they any closer to passing any kind of law here? Well, David, only two of the five executives, the CEOs of X, formerly known as Twitter, and Snap, are promising to support bipartisan proposed law that would hold these companies more liable for harmful content on their platforms. But notably, Mark Zuckerberg and the CEO of TikTok did not. Now, as far as Congress, for years they've been trying to regulate social media, but so far have been unsuccessful in trying to pass any major legislation. David? Selena Wang, Lini Saw from The Hill tonight. Selena, thank you. We turn now to the U.S. tonight preparing to retaliate after the deadly drone attack killing three American soldiers, the Pentagon making plans, and what we've learned about what this could look like. And tonight here, you will see the heartbreaking moment, the phone call from President Biden to one of the families, and what the president reveals to the parents that moves them to tears. Martha Raddatz from Jordan, again tonight. Tonight, for the first time, the White House identifying the Iran-backed militants behind that drone attack on a remote U.S. base here in Jordan that left three American soldiers dead. And we are learning tonight that the majority of the 47 wounded were National Guard from across the country. The attribution that, uh, that our intelligence community is comfortable with is that uh, this was done by the umbrella group called the Islamic Resistance in Iraq. President Biden firm on a U.S. response. The Pentagon preparing to unleash what officials say will be a multi-day, multi-target attack, bigger than anything seen thus far, which could include Iranian assets outside of Iran. But another U.S. official saying the president has deep misgivings about hitting Iran itself, fearing a wider war. And tonight, the heartbreaking moment when President Biden called one of the families of the fallen soldiers, Oneida and Sean Sanders, whose 24-year-old daughter Kennedy was killed. I know there's nothing anybody can say or do to ease the pain. I've been there. Yes, sir, we understand. The parents overcome with emotion when the president reveals how their daughter will be honored. We're promoting her posthumously to sergeant. Oh, wow, Thanks, that is sir. the best news I've heard today. Thank you so much. You don't know how much that means to us. So, well, I tell you what, it means a lot to, a lot to me. Uh, my son spent a year in Iraq until I lost him. And uh, I, uh, you know, 1%, 1% of all these kids are the ones that uh, we can take care of 99% of us. The parents who learned from the president on the phone that their daughter uh, will be honored. Uh, that was very moving, Martha. Martha Raddatz back with us uh, from Amman, Jordan tonight. You reported there the Pentagon, of course, moving forward with what will likely be, as you pointed out there, an extensive uh, days-long retaliation. In the meantime, you also have new reporting tonight about a missile launch toward a U.S. warship. This would be potentially the closest to a warship yet. David, a cruise missile launched by the Houthis into the Red Sea came within a mile of the USS Gravely. It is the closest a missile has come to a U.S. warship since the Houthis began attacking commercial vessels in mid-October. Hours later, the U.S. destroyed a Houthi surface-to-air missile in Yemen, saying it posed an imminent threat to U.S. aircraft. David? Martha Raddatz with us again tonight from Amman. Martha, thank you. Meantime, back here in the U.S. tonight, we are tracking two storms slamming the U.S. right into the west, an atmospheric river already hitting, a second one on the way next. Multiple states on alert tonight for flooding, mudslides, strong winds, heavy snow, 70-mile-an-hour wind gusts, up to five inches of rain in the Bay Area, several feet of snow in the mountains. Senior meteorologist Rob Marciano tracking it all again tonight. Hey, Rob.
Hi, David. The Pacific remaining active on the heels of the flooding rainstorms in California last week, and these storms will likely have more water than the folks in San Francisco, the Bay Area, Northern California. You've been feeling it all day long. Flood watch is up there, and for most of California, high surf, high wind warnings, winter storm warnings. That plume going over Big Sur tonight and sinking down to the south, Santa Barbara, Ventura, eventually L.A., right around the rush hour. Debris flow is possible. Strong winds continue. And then San Diego, I think you have a higher risk of flooding because you're so saturated from last week. One to three feet of snow. We'll take that in the mountains. But the next storm coming in on Sunday, this one looks to be larger and longer lasting with likely more impacts into next week. David, we are definitely thinking of the folks in the West tonight. Rob Marciano with us. Thanks, Rob. We're going to turn tonight to a horrific crime outside Philadelphia. A son accused of attacking, beheading his own father, who was a longtime federal employee. We will not show the images here, but authorities are now pointing to the son's rage at the federal government. Here's our Chief Justice Correspondent, Pierre Thomas. Tonight, Justin Moan is accused of the unthinkable, of murdering and beheading his father, a longtime federal worker, and posting it on YouTube. I am very sad for the family. Um, I'm very sad for the community. Um, you know, and, and also for the people that knew him. According to police, the 32-year-old Moan from Levittown, Pennsylvania, killed his father in a fit of rage about politics, angry at President Biden and apparently at all federal workers. Police say his dad, Michael Moan, worked for the federal government. Neighbors shocked. It's weird. It's just, it's, you know, it's like, you know, we all watch over each other. And uh, it's just, it's just sad. And in a scene from a horror movie, which we will not show here, Moan allegedly holding his father's head in a rambling 14-minute video left online for hours, describing him as a traitor to this country and calling for a revolution, saying if Joe Biden does not abdicate, then capture him and bring him to me in Pennsylvania. Moan was taken into custody 100 miles away, arrested with a gun inside a National Guard base. The FBI called in to assist as U.S. authorities continue to be concerned about an increasingly volatile environment where political threats have been on the rise. In fact, a top DOJ official recently told me the current surge in political threats is unprecedented, with judges, FBI agents, and presidential candidates among those recently targeted. David? This is very alarming, Pierre Thomas, tonight. Thank you, Pierre. Now to the frightening scene in Tampa, a road rage incident, a four-year-old girl shot and wounded, and the driver tracked by helicopters. Victor Akendo from Florida. You got it right here. That's him right there. Tonight, a suspect under arrest after a road rage shooting in Tampa that left a four-year-old injured. Slow speed through there. He's probably looking for a bailout. A police helicopter tracking 34-year-old James D. Jackson's vehicle shortly after police say he fled from the scene. According to authorities, on Tuesday evening, Jackson was driving when he became irate with the driver of another vehicle. Jackson allegedly pulling next to the vehicle and firing multiple shots. Inside, the driver, a woman in her 30s, an adult male passenger in his late 20s, and two children in the back seat. The four-year-old daughter of the driver struck by a bullet. She was then transported to the hospital. Jackson now facing a dozen charges, including attempted murder, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, and discharge of a firearm from a vehicle. And tonight, Tampa police say the victim, that four-year-old girl who was wounded, is in stable condition. David? Victor Akendo in Florida. Victor, thank you. We turn now to the border, and tonight, the eye-opening message from a leading Senate Republican who was asked if House Republicans should tune out Donald Trump on this. Rachel Scott on the Hill. Today, Donald Trump turning up the pressure on Republicans to reject the border security bill their own party has demanded for months. Trump attacking the compromise bill Senate Republicans and Democrats are working on together, saying, call it the stupid bill and make sure it doesn't get passed. The bad border deal would be worse than no deal at all. Trump wants to kill the bill so he can run on immigration in the general election. But Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell vowing to push forward. Obviously, this is a incredibly challenging uh, political discussion we've been having. I still favor trying to make law when you can. Conservative Republican Senator James Lankford of Oklahoma, who has been leading the negotiations, tells me Republicans have been waiting for this moment for 30 years. Republicans have talked about this for a long time. We've done lots of press conferences. We've done lots of trips to the border. We've done lots of moments to be able to say something needs to be done. This is our something moment. And to Republicans, to Republicans that are watching what the former president is saying, calling it a betrayal, calling it a stupid bill, are you just telling them to tune that out? No, I'm just telling them to read the bill and make their own decision on it. 
Donald Trump has called the Senate bill ridiculous, insisting it will only make things worse. But here's the thing. Nobody even knows what's in that compromise yet. It is still being negotiated, David. Not even made public yet. Rachel Scott live on the Hill. Rachel, thank you. We turn now to the deadly shooting on that movie set tonight. What new court documents now claim about the armorer, Hannah Gutierrez, and her lawyer's response. Here's Mola Lenghi. I'm the armorer, or at least I was. Tonight, as the criminal trial nears for the armorer charged in that fatal Rust movie shooting, newly released texts reveal that some members of the crew were concerned about her alleged drug and alcohol use during filming. Court documents show four days after the shooting, the film's prop master told another crew member in one text exchange about how Hannah Gutierrez had blacked out the previous weekend. Court documents say witnesses also claimed Gutierrez was high on marijuana in her hotel room while simultaneously in possession of ammunition to be used on the set. So here's the box that I got them out of. Okay. Authorities say six live rounds were found on the movie set in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Just how they got there remains a central question in this case. Tonight in court documents, prosecutors say their investigation developed substantial evidence that Ms. Gutierrez brought the live rounds on set when she first began work on the film, a claim Gutierrez denies. Gutierrez now facing involuntary manslaughter and other charges after the revolver actor Alec Baldwin was rehearsing with fired a live bullet, killing cinematographer Helena Hutchins and injuring director Joel Souza. Tonight, her lawyers saying in a statement, the state unquestionably lacks authority to prosecute Gutierrez on this charge, adding their response to launch vitriolic personal attacks to obscure the facts and truth is more of the same unprofessional conduct that we have seen throughout the case. Well, Alec Baldwin, newly charged with involuntary manslaughter, waived a virtual arraignment that was scheduled for tomorrow. He's pleading not guilty, David. Mola Lenghi with us tonight. Mola, thank you. Tonight, the economy and even with consumer confidence rising and the stock market recently hitting new highs, the Federal Reserve today leaving interest rates unchanged, concerned about fueling inflation moving forward amid an improving economy. The fourth meeting in a row now without raising rates. Stocks falling today on the news, but still ending January on a positive note. When we come back here tonight here in New York City, authorities say two NYPD officers attacked by asylum seekers, multiple arrests tonight. The images here in a moment. And the FDA warning tonight, look at this, about eye drops packaged to look like a popular brand, the real thing, and then the side-by-side -side images of potentially contaminated counterfeit drops. We'll have more in a moment. Tonight in New York City, the alarming video authorities say showing two NYPD officers being attacked by asylum seekers. The officers have been trying to break up a disorderly crowd in Times Square. Authorities say they were jumped by the asylum seekers in front of a building on 42nd Street. The officers were knocked to the ground, kicked in the head and body. At least five people arrested. Police tonight searching for several other suspects. The officers are going to be okay. When we come back here tonight, the new FDA warning this evening, the eye drops side by side. You'll see the counterfeits and the warning here. And then the stunning images coming in from NASA of 19 galaxies beyond the Milky Way in a moment. To the index, the FDA warning about potentially contaminated counterfeit eye drops. Officials say the drops can easily be mistaken for FDA-approved Bosch & Lom's Lumify eye drops. The others, South Moon, Rebrite, and Fifivco eye drops using nearly identical packaging, not approved in the U.S. The FDA says South Moon eye drops tested positive for bacteria. The copycat brands claim to treat various eye conditions, including glaucoma. We have more on our website. When we come back here tonight, the spectacular images, 19 galaxies just beyond the Milky Way. Finally tonight here, looking to the stars. Tonight, the extraordinary new images from space, 19 spiral galaxies near the Milky Way, the clearest view ever observed beyond our own galaxy. Captured by the James Webb Space Telescope, these incredible images are now offering scientists a better, deeper understanding of how stars form. And right here tonight, Hi, David. Janice Lee, project scientist for strategic initiatives at the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore. What we saw just completely blew us away. The light from stars is actually glowing in dust emission. These are the places where um, the earliest stages of star formation occur. Tonight, astronomers, researchers across the globe are now dissecting these new and awe-inspiring images right along with the rest of us. They will help us better understand the origins of our universe. They're so different and that teaches us how stars form and how that process might be different in different galaxies. The one thing they have in common, they are all spectacularly beautiful. Overwhelming in scope.
but beautiful indeed. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.